On this episode of Maritime Insights from a Deck Officer, I want to make a follow-up video about the Thames Borg that ran aground uh, in the Northwest Passage. And um, I first thought maybe there is ice, so I did some research if there was ice or not. Then I checked uh, what route they were taking, and uh, then I also looked at the uh, charts and to see if there was any shallow areas that they were going through. So uh, let's have a look. As a deck officer, I have planned routes through icy areas. In Greenland and in Iceland, we were going on a cruise from Boston to Rotterdam, all the way over the top of Greenland. And uh, that was in a time when there was a lot of ice as well. So I know how to look at uh, ice charts. So here I pulled up an ice chart from the Canadian Ice Service, which was published on the 8th of September. And you can see the Northwest Passage over here. This is the route that the Thamesborg was taking through here, through Icebreaker Strait, and then up here through uh, Franklin Strait. And this is where the Thames Borg uh, ran aground, right over here. As you can see, it's all blue. That means that there's hardly any ice reported. When it's green, there is a little bit of ice. When it's yellow, there's a little bit more ice. But obviously it was um, open waters, so there was no ice. So we can uh, rule that out. Then I looked at the uh, last uh, AIS position just before they grounded, which is right over here on September 6th at 1534 UTC time, and their speed was 14.6. That means they were going full speed, because if you look at the um, Wagenborg company website, and uh, you go into the Thamesborg, you look at all the details, you can see right over here, the speed is 14 knots, maximum speed, and that uh, consumes 20 metric tons per day in fuel. Then I uh, zoomed in some more to get the exact GPS position from where they are grounded right over here. And I put that in an online map over here and you could chart where it is exactly to have an idea of what the chart looks like there when it comes to uh, the depth. Now, if you zoom in, you can see Franklin Strait, you can see their position right there. And if you zoom in, you can already see there is land right here. And if you zoom in even further, it will show you all the depth. So here it is 100 meters of depth. And here it's 34. Um, here it is 50 meters. And here it is 20 meters. And this is where they got a ground right there. Now, the ship had a draft of nine and a half meters. So it should have enough clearance under the keel to cross over here. But would I chart my route exactly over this point where it's only 20 meters and you know that it is poorly charted? Probably not. Now, maybe they, cha they changed course for a ship, but they did not. Uh, I'll let you, I'll show you the track here in a second. So there was no, they did not make an alteration of course to avoid uh, another ship. They were straight on their course. Um, to go over this point uh, right here. To give you some insights about uh, route planning on a cargo ship, uh, typically one of the deck officers is in charge of uh, planning the route, a safe route. Um, he will uh, plot all these waypoints and uh, courses, and he will also check obviously, you know, if they were not going over any shallows and so on. So that will be checked by the uh, deck officer that is in charge of the navigational route planning. But once he is done, he will look it over with the captain uh, to also have a, a second opinion on the uh, planned route. And if the captain says, okay, we can go ahead with this, then they will uh, put this course in the electronic chart display. And then once the uh, deck officers come on watch, because they do four hours on, eight hours off, they, there's uh, three rotations, so there will be different officers on the bridge. They will do different stretches of the route. And they will, once the deck officer comes on the bridge, they will obviously also check um, their next leg, their next stretch of what they will be doing in the next four hours. And then they will definitely uh, check also how close they are going by land. In this case, they were going about uh, two nautical miles uh, west of the land over here, but they would also check, you know, if there is enough depth on that course that they are on. And uh, here they would, would go straight over that uh, uh, shallow patch over here. 
So basically the Thamesborg ran full speed aground right here in this location. So was it deep enough? Yeah, possibly. But you know, would I have charted my course over this point? Probably not. There is lots of deeper area of 200 meters around here on, on, on the west side. Uh, but there's also a thing called squat and I'll explain that to you in a second uh, which means that the ship could actually have even more draft because it is going in a shallow area. So squat, here's a good example of an image. So normally when you're in open sea you have water flowing underneath the ship and it can go there freely. But if you go into shallow waters then that water actually speeds up, it accelerates underneath the ship to go out uh, in on, on the stern of the ship but it creates a low pressure here and that means that the ship is being sucked down and that increases your draft so your under keel clearance is actually less when you go through a uh, shallow area so that could have also uh, been an issue um, on this size ship maybe you have a squat that would potentially uh, increase your draft by maybe a meter or maybe two meters so let's say one half meter so they had nine and a half meter draft plus one and a half meters uh, of maybe squat then that would be 11 meters and the chart of that was 20. so you would say according to the chart there would be enough room to go over it but if it's poorly charted then uh, poorly surveyed then uh, that could have been a problem so then I looked at the past track of the Thamesborg and you can see here they were going straight as an arrow over here to this point. Um, they most likely had a straight line here in the chart to go probably somewhere around here and uh, that would clear them to go past uh, the land over here by about let's say two miles they would clear that island. Now, as you can see, straight. So there was no shipping uh, traffic that they had to go around or anything like that. They were going in a straight arrow line, straight over their intended course, um, and then straight over that shallow. Now, like I said before, you know, it would probably be better uh, if they would have been a little bit more west where it was deeper instead of going so close to the shore and over that shallow area, like I showed here. Uh, because uh, here it's 200 meters, 220 meters, 162, a lot better than going over this little patch over there. If you zoom out some more, then you can see the, the rest of the part of the route, and this is called Icebreaker Strait right over here. And again, they uh, went through here, and you can look on the map, if you go to Icebreaker Strait, which is right over here, icebreaker channel sorry apologize but you can also see it is very shallow and at the lowest point let's see 16.2 meters right over here which is also not a lot especially considering the squat and you would have maybe a draft of 11 meters yeah that's uh, that's a sketchy little area uh, but also through there they were going as you can see here the speed was 13 knots so that was almost full speed they were going through there as well so uh, yeah it's uh, like I said it's uh, poorly surveyed water and um, also very shallow so it's not without risk uh, going through this uh, area now this was probably the uh, last uh, voyage the Thamesburg was making through the Northwest Passage because normally you can only sail through the Northwest Passage from July until September so only a small window of three months so if they are now aground and uh, they need help from other ships to uh, salvage the ship or to repair the ship or bring equipment or whatnot they will have to do it soon because uh, yeah they're running out of time soon it will be very icy again in that area and uh, they might even be stuck i really hope they get the uh, thamesborg and their crew on their way soon again so they continue their voyage and uh, deliver their cargo to uh, by como now uh, if you enjoyed this update uh, give this a like and uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, also if you like this video i'll put the previous video from the thamesborg uh, right over here so you can have a look at that that uh, is all about 
the um, story about the Thamesborg.